are heading to Nebraska. We're going to a place uh, first off the Republican River. We're going to be hunting maybe whitetails and some mule deer. Should be a good trip. From there, if we don't get it done, or even if we do, we have two tags in Nebraska. We're going to go on to the Sand Hills of Nebraska. And you may remember I chased a 190 inch deer last year, missed him, and hopefully I go there to redeem myself. We get it redeemed. It should be a good week no matter what. It's middle of October. Deer should be on their feet for sure. We are in Nebraska. Basically what I'm doing here is I just got a Facebook message of a guy that loves the show and big time deer hunter asked if we want to come up here on the Republican River. We got a really good looking place here, several thousand acres, but we got an enemy and that's standing corn. Just sneak into this sand. Hopefully that wind stays true. That's one thing that I am worried about tonight. We got north wind, north, north, north. And then right up that last hour, she's gonna start turning from the north, come out of the east. By the morning, it's gonna be sound. So that's always scary. guys uh to, to go in and hang that set earlier in the day slip in there and just be quiet and have that wind ride and and to have a, a encounter with a mature eight point like that was a really cool night I think he's every bit of 160, but I don't know how to, I, I'm not a mule deer hunter. Well, if he's mature, I'll kill him. He's mature. We're gonna come in from the west. Is he in this section? He's, uh, this is going up here real quick. That canyon's flat that he's laying in, if we get on that roadway, he'll see us. This should be an easy stalk. And then once we get to that last little roll there, I think he can pop up. Let's do it. I'll follow you. His head's up. Yeah. He's definitely just laying down here and open. He's got to figure out how we're going to come into him. Oh, he stood up. Oh, yeah, I see him. He's a stud. I think that's a 50 yard shot. I can get on top of them right there. This bug's right down here, and he's a, he's a good, he's definitely worth going after. I'm gonna take a gamble, and we're gonna go back here and go over this ridge, cut across this, sneak up, and if we can get to this cedar, uh, I believe I could have a 50 yard shot or so. so.
conversation coming in like we did. We were, I thought the wind would have enough cross in it, but anyway, we just bumped a great mule here. Maybe we can get back on and find him again. Well, really, I look back at today and uh, maybe uh, a, a bad decision of uh, flirting with the wind. You just got to get a plan and um, go try to execute it. And just, you know, it's not a high percentage deal with a bow and arrow. I mean, obviously with a muzzleloader or a rifle, we'd have been done today. Tomorrow's a new day. We just got to go find one again in the morning, cover ground with a pickup. So we'll see. I'm tired right now, but I'm going to bed. So good night, guys. Setting up in a truck, watching the sunrise over here. It's just it's still dark, but uh, it's daylight. We're gonna put these optics to work. Mule deer today, maybe white tails in the near future, but right now it's uh, muleys. thought we had him killed. Anyway, I thought I was gonna have a 60 yard shot at him right there when he was crossing the fence. I thought I had plenty of time, but he closed and when he jumped, it was all over. And then we've probably been, I don't know, a mile and a half or two after him, seen him two or three more times. But... Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, gotta keep on. Trying to find him from the truck, trying to cover ground. We've seen a couple of bucks and they were bedding down right at daylight, which is not a good sign. The plan is we'll do this this morning. If we can't find him, we're going to head over to Clark's, a different place, go over there and continue to mule deer hunt, but just uh, in a different place. Guys, I think we're gonna call this a wrap. Head over to our other place in Nebraska. It's It's been successful here. Ryan's done a great job. Got great ground here. We've got on a really good whitetail and we've chased it around a good muley for the last few days. But, you know, it's time to head over to the other place. So we're gonna head over there to Clark's and, and uh, get up in the sand hills and hopefully uh, find a buck like we did uh, uh, last year. Uh, got a pretty good drive ahead of us, but we'll, we'll see you when we get there. Yeah. 
five does, which is going to make it tough, but he just went over this right here. And basically what we're going to do is just ease up there. we got wind right in our face and just start seeing if we can find him again and put him to bed. Let's go get him. Well, guys, this is where I was uh, when I spotted the muley um, and, and just kind of wanted to talk to you about uh, what we did right, what we did wrong, and, and learn from it. To me, hunting seasons and, and success is all about decisions. It's not just decisions on, you know, what stand to walk to or go to. It's decisions of what state to be in, what wind to play, all that. Yesterday, the decision that I made was we could walk and, and get on a hill and just spot, or we could get in a truck, and, and there's two tracks through these valleys and where you can see up in the hills. Anyway, that's the decision I made. I, I made the decision, we're gonna cover as much ground as we can. We've snuck up here, we got him bedded. Does are still on their feet. He's not in a very good place for us, so I'm hoping the does will go right over that ridge and then he'll get back up and we'll take our time and get up to that ridge and we'll be in good position. Buck just got up, he's making a move. Exactly what I wanted him to do though. key thing is when you're going to spot these deer is making sure when you leave the truck that you have a landmark up there because man when you get out if you don't carefully do it when you get out and get up there it all looks different so you have to be real careful and make sure okay i see that yuck i see that hill and that's what we did and we took off right after him and then just being careful i see another deer up there looks like I don't like where it's at because it can see the world. It looks like another buck. Well, we got two things. We spotted the big one, and then we got a wind to go hunting with. So we're just going to be patient. We snuck over a lot of hills and nothing, but I got to keep that same patience. He's going to be over one of these hills. Ready, 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 ready. Got you. He's laying down the door. Go back his way and slide down, and I think I can get within about 50. but be patient. You know, we had a strong wind and, and you can do things. Now at the same time, what helped us kill this buck was we were very patient every hill that we went over and we snuck to it just like he was laying on the other side at 30 yards. And, and I think that was key because we lost this deer for over an hour, but we stayed, we snuck over every hill.
Joe's coming back. He's coming right up here, Tyler. sitting there I was gonna try to hold left and I didn't I shot way right when I first shot him man then I stuck down and grabbed the air right quick and this doe comes up 10 steps and I'm just praying God all right I know I'm probably fixing to get a shot help me to make it he stops out there at 44 somewhere in there and I shot him high wasn't the best of shots but and just down that's a big sucker God this big well, guys, we're right back here yesterday where I shot the buck. I mean, this is actually where I laid, or I, I sat. I crawled right here, put my feet out, and that hill right there is where the buck was laying. Now, obviously, you see my arrow as it come out. It bent. I don't know exactly what happened. No excuses. I missed the deer, but the good Lord blessed me. When he comes up, this doe brings him right over here to 40, 42 yards, and I didn't make the best of shots in, but we got him down. When I got to right here and crawled, I took my quiver off, and I laid my quiver, but I popped an arrow out and just had it loose laying there. But if I wouldn't have had that and I had to try to get that out of the quiver, and it's hard with one hand, I don't know if I could have done it. So just being prepared, the little thing. Oh my goodness. Oh my, look at that. What have we done? This is a giant muley. Huge twos, big deep split, great fours, and really good eye guards for a mule deer. And look at the mature, uh, the, I mean, just the neck alone. This deer might go 400 pounds. <sighs> the good Lord, just a platform. The only reason I'm out here is for him. And here it is, our first day. We got here last night, got to look around a little bit, but our first day at noon today, we, we been on this deer since daylight. And here it is, 12.45, and I'm sitting behind him. Well, guys, the trip has come to an end. Shot a great muley. Very thankful, feeling blessed. Remember, God is sovereign. He knows everything that's going on. He's, he's using different things to do his will. He died for us, and his son to die. You know, then rose again three days later, and he will return. But to go to heaven, you have to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Know that you are a sinner, and that you're nothing without him. That you put your faith in him, and your new life begins.